Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to my show. My name is Jason DaCosta, and this is Consistent Preterism. It is Monday morning, and it is a beautiful day in the island of Rhodes. And uh, I am just cruising on my way to work. This is going to be a very short one today. Um, <clears throat> just was thinking a little bit about the uh, the end of the story as well as um, a couple other quick things. So the, the cool thing about this story, which um, not a lot of people really consider, I don't think, is that we have um, the... Sorry, somebody almost just hit me. We have the... Uh, final view of the end of the story, right? So you have the book of Revelation, uh, and not a lot of people understand how to do that book. Um, they kind of think, some people think it's chronological, some people think it speaks of different ages, some people thinks it thinks uh, think that it's speaking of um, different, I don't know, eight different types of people, who knows, right? There's all kinds of different theories on it. But, um, the nice thing about the book of Revelation is that it gives you a final gl uh, glimpse into the throne room, into heaven, right? When the mission is completed and everything's done, um, you get these little, you know, looks into that throne room, uh, into heaven, in, into the place where the, the throne of God was. And you see who's around that throne and you see who's singing and you see who's rejoicing because they've been saved and redeemed and um, so you have a really good look at it. And the irony is, is that it's only the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So, um, you know, you have to kind of use a little, just a little, and I know it hurts sometimes, but a little bit of logic and a little bit of common sense. Um, when you read things like, for instance, Revelation 14, which says that uh, only the 144,000, only the 12 tribes of Israel could learn the redemption song because they were the ones redeemed from the earth. Now, that's such a bold and powerful statement that I don't even, I mean, when you read that statement, you should basically just throw up your hands and just submit to Israel only, like a choke, like a, you know, like we got you in a, um, what do they call it? The, um, uh, not the figure four. Figure four was a leg lock, I think, back in the days of the WWE, but a full Nelson or something, something along those lines, right? You're just being choked out and there's nowhere to go. So you have to tap out and admit that it is the truth. Right. That's one of those statements. So you have this statement that only the 12 tribes could learn the song and only the 12 tribes were redeemed from the earth. Um, but you have all these pictures of the, the, you know, the final scene and it's only the 12 tribes. So you have to kind of allow everything else in the story to fall under that context um, and sort of. You know, I know it's hard when you see all these little conversion accounts in the gospel, uh, gospels and in the epistles and whatnot in the book of Acts. But you have to allow those to fall into that context because if the 12 tribes were the only ones being redeemed from the earth, um, then that means that everybody who was redeemed in the story was was part of the 12 tribes. Pretty simple stuff. Um, and then you have Jesus kind of uh, mirroring that. Well, not kind of, but absolutely mirroring that in his statement that he comes only for the lost, for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And I've heard some stupid explanations there, of course, where, um, you know, oh, that's just speaking of the Jews, right? He's just talking of the Jews there. But no, Jesus said to the Jews, he said he has sheep also not of this fold. So he has, he's got sheep in the Jewish fold and he's got sheep not of this fold. He said he comes only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That means that both sheep of the Jewish fold and of the nations were part of the, the full body of Israelites that were being saved. That's what I come only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel means, okay? He wasn't saying he comes only for the lost sheep of the house of the Jews or, you know, he was saying he comes for the lost sheep of the house of Israel collectively, both Jew and Gentile coming together and all Israel being saved. That was the goal. That was the sum of all the parts. Um, and the, the fact that there's uh, an elect amount of individuals really kind of solidifies this, doesn't it? I mean, Jesus said, go and gather my elect from the four corners of the earth. And it had to be done before his coming, right? Matthew 24, 14, this gospel will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. And I, I, it's funny, Don K. Preston um, is was recently, I guess, sharing something on this, uh, this passage, and somebody kind of chuckled and sent it over to me. And I, I listened to just a few minutes of it, but... Um, it was basically him trying to say that 
the gospel, right, that they preached before the end was the good news of the destruction of the old covenant. So so these uh, apostles, according to Don, were going out to all the nations, right? All these Gentiles who had nothing to do with the old covenant. And they were preaching this good news of the end of the old covenant, right? So the old covenant was coming to an end and these, these apostles just really, really wanted to tell these pagans uh, that that was the case, right? Um, no, okay, that's not at all what that means. And the only reason why he's saying that is because he is trying to get around the chokehold that is Matthew 24, 14, which says that the gospel ended at the coming. And he's trying to say that the gospel that is spoken of in that verse is a different gospel, right? It's the gospel of the end of the old kingdom. It's the gospel of the destruction of Jerusalem. That's the good news that they were preaching, right? Paul just wanted to tell pagans that Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. That's the good news that had to go to all nations before the end came. And then once that end came, according to Don, there would be additional good news that goes out to all the nations, right? But no, that's just stupid, and that doesn't work. There was one gospel, one good news message, one salvation message that was going out to gather in the lost sheep of the house of Israel from both near and far off. That's exactly what Jesus meant in Matthew 24, 14. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So the gospel, the good news of the kingdom, that's the good news, right? Remember the beginning of the Gospels. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The axe is laid at the root. So the Gospel of the kingdom was the same message that John and Jesus both said in the beginning when they said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And everybody was pressing their way into it. That's because the kingdom was going to be delivered to God according to the story at the end. So the gospel in Matthew 24, 14 was the good news or the preaching of the soon to come kingdom. That was the restoration of Israel and that was basically Jacob according to Luke chapter one, verses 31 to 33. And now as, as we know, all Israel was saved. That means all Jacob was saved. And, they were, and Jacob was delivered to God at the end as his inheritance. And then of course we see them in the throne room in the book of Revelation, at the very end, standing around the throne, crying out with palm branches, saying, Salvation belongs to our God. He is the God of Israel, only 500 times in the story. And it says, He will be their God, and they will be His people, and He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is victory language. This is them in heaven, having received the promise that was made to the fathers, having received the promise and the hope of the 12 tribes that they served er earnestly, day and night, hoping to attain. This is the very inheritance of that promise, and it's shown in Revelation. And of course, like I just said, Revelation 14 shows exactly who received that promise and shows exactly who was, was redeemed, and it was only the 12 tribes. So the elect uh, factor here, and if you know anything about the elect, right, in the Old Testament, the only ones who were ever, ever said to be God's elect and God's chosen was Israel. That's it. Right, so it doesn't change. It doesn't change when you get to the New Testament. You don't have the elect being uh, designated as Israel throughout the whole Old Testament, and then when you come to the last days of Israel, suddenly the elect changes. No, that's dumb. Israel was God's elect. Israel was God's chosen. Israel was God's portion. Israel was God's inheritance. Do you see a, a pattern here? It's always about Israel. So when Jesus commissions them to go to the four corners of the earth and seek his elect to fish the elect, right? Fishers of men. They're fishing chosen ones out of the nations. And Revelation 5 shows that beautifully when it says you have called us out from every nation, tribe, tongue, and kindred. So again, the gospel wasn't going out to save the nations as in all people everywhere for all time. The gospel was a temporary, limited, specific, exclusive, imminent, urgent message that had to go out quickly before the coming of the Lord, which was taking place in that generation, and it had to gather in all the elect from the four winds of the earth before the coming. That's the whole point of the story. That's it. And again, no, it's not a matter of whether it happened or not. That's not the issue. The issue for me is just simply, what does the story say? What type of story is it trying to convey to the reader? And that's exactly what it is. 
all right so was it true who knows did it really happen the way it, it claims who knows did all this supernatural stuff occur the way it claims and then you know at the very end did the savior come from come for them and call them up to the clouds in the twinkling of an eye they were changed and they put on that immortal angelic body that christ did at the end who knows right but that is exactly what the story says so this is not a story for all time this is not a story for all uh people this is not a story for all nations anyone who will come okay people kind of get tripped up with words like whosoever right or in the book of revelation which was written some 10 years or so before the end at the very end where it says he who thirsts let him come okay this is just john in the midst of this commission this mission as they're leading up towards the end towards the coming of the lord and the end of all things john is basically saying let he who thirsts come okay he's speaking in the moment in the mission during the last days period and that has nothing to do with anybody today the whosoever right whosoever believes well, that's still limited to those whom the message went to, okay? Whosoever within the co the context of the sheep, or, or of Israel, I should say. So anyways, that's all I wanted to say, just kind of like a hodgepodge of information this Monday morning. Um, you know, I'll be uh, pretty busy over the next few weeks. Um, we're planning the wedding, got a lot of shit going on with that. It's kind of stressful because we're doing a destination wedding and we're working out all the details and our uh, small quaint 30 to 40 person wedding um, which we had hoped for has now doubled in size just because it's like oh shit we have to invite this person or we have to invite that person so it's just been a real uh, stressful time but we're trying to make the best of it and um, you know work out all the details so uh, I will do my best to kind of fire off audios when I can. I appreciate you guys staying um, tuned in and listening. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And we'll be back another day, another time, another place, and another rhyme. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.